Hi, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at blurring the screen in our particle explosion program. So if we, if we run this at the moment, we've got an explosion and it's circular and uh, it should happen at a similar speed on any computer, although on a slower computer it's going to be jerky. And um, in this tutorial, we're going to look at uh, adding a blur effect which will make it look a lot nicer and a lot more like some kind of weird natural phenomenon than it does at the moment. If, if you are finding that this program is already jerky on your computer, one thing to do is make sure that you compile the release target. So in Eclipse that's project build configuration set active release because the release versions of programs which are not set up to use the Eclipse Debugger or Visual C++ Debugger, which we're not using anyway, um, we haven't used it. They run faster than debug programs. Um, if you've got a really old slow comp computer, then you might get very jerky results with this very expensive blur algorithm, expensive in terms of CPU time, but um, let's have a go at it anyway and, and see, see how it looks. So I'm going to go to my um, main.cpp and uh, in main.cpp we're actually at one point clearing the screen and uh, I'm not going to clear the screen anymore, I'm going to get rid of this. Uh, what we're going to do is blur the particles out. Every time this loop iterates we're going to apply a blur so a particle will leave a blurred trace behind it. And at the moment now if I run this we're just going to see uh, uh, all the, the positions of all the particles as they go along are not going to be erased, so it looks quite horrendous, but it's going to look good when we apply the blur. So I'm going to implement a method which we're going to call before updating the screen, before displaying the results of uh, plotting the particles, which I'll call screen.blur. Let's call it box blur. Um, there are various ways of blurring the screen, uh, doing blur algorithms, also on photographs for that matter, in photo editing software. Uh, you can use a Gaussian blur, which is a kind of natural looking blur, but we're going to use a thing called a box blur, which is very simple to implement. And this is going to be the most difficult bit, in some ways, of the whole tutorial. It's going to take a while to explain this, but it will give us a really beautiful effect, at least if your computer is fast enough to display it reasonably quickly. Um, yeah, box, box blur, um, there are various ways of implementing it and uh, I'm going to just implement it in a kind of common sense sort of way. I'm going to explain what we want to achieve and we're going to just code that. But if you, after seeing this video, if you Google on the internet, you can find various ways of optimizing box blur to make it run faster so if you, do have, if you do experience speed issues with this blurring algorithm, there are ways of optimizing it and making it faster. And you can find that by searching on Google quite easily. There's a number of pages that explain that. Let's go to screen.h and add this, the prototype for box blur as a public function here, uh, a public method. Go to screen.cpp and somewhere in here, um, let's go ahead and implement this. Let's say void screen box blur. Now what I want to do here is instead of drawing the screen directly, I want to um, look, at, look at the screen as it is with the pixels on it and then calculate a new screen with blurred values for all the pixels. So um, I, I can't apply this algorithm to the screen pixel by pixel because we'd end up confusing the value calculated for one pixel with the values calculated for the last pixel. Um, we, we, we can't mix up our workings as we're going along. What we need to do is create a whole new screen of pixels and uh, put our, our, our calculations in this second screen and then draw that second screen. So in screen.h we've got a um, we've got a buffer somewhere here. So we've got this 
buffer and I'm going to create a second buffer so that we can look at one buffer and put our calculated blur results in the second buffer. So let's, let's copy this line and I'm going to call this buffer 1 now and buffer 2. So now we need to go to screen.cpp and look at the syntax errors now and wherever we've got buffer m underscore buffer we need to have buffer 1 and buffer 2. So here I've got buffer 1 and we also need to initialize m underscore buffer 2 null. And uh, scrolling down here, this is where we're actually allocating the buffer. So I'm going to copy that line and we're going to allocate buffer 1 and buffer 2. Here we're clearing the buffer, getting rid of any garbage in the memory there. So now we want to do it with buffer 1 and buffer 2. Uh, this is the screen clear function, which we're actually not going to use, but just for the sake of completeness, let's add buffer 1 and buffer 2. Um, yeah, I, I, we, we, actually, we, since we're not going to use this function, and since I'm not sure anymore exactly what it should probably do, um, we, we, we're probably better off just getting rid of this. Let's get rid of the screen clear function, because I'm no longer sure what bit you would want to clear or why in this program. So let's clear it. Let's get rid of it. Continuing in screen.cpp, this is where we're in set pixel, this is where we're plotting pixels. So I don't want to plot the pixels to the second buffer, only to the to buffer 1. So I'm going to just change this to buffer 1. And similarly, when we update the texture with the results um, of the pixels uh, in, in the buffer, I'm going to just use buffer 1 there. And um, finally, we need to remember to delete the buffers. So let's delete buffer 1 and delete buffer 2. Now, um, if we go back to the box blur implementation, so I want to copy from one buffer and write to another, and the, the buffer that I want to write to is buffer 1, because it's buffer 1 that we're then going on to draw on the screen. But at the moment, all the pixels are stored in buffer 1. What I'm going to do is, is I'm going to store, I'm going to swap the pointers, so buffer 2 points at where buffer 1 originally pointed at, and then we're going to copy from buffer 2 into buffer 1. Now, a naive way of doing that would be to say m underscore buffer 1 equals m underscore buffer 2. Let's put a comment here. Swap the buffers. So pixel info is in um, buffer 2 and we are drawing to m underscore buffer 1. So a naive way of swapping this would say m underscore buffer 1 equals m underscore buffer 2 and m underscore buffer 2 equals m underscore buffer 1. The object here is to uh, point buffer 2 at whatever memory buffer 1 was pointing at and to point buffer 2 at whatever memory um, buffer 1 was pointing at. Have I said that the right way around? Well, hopefully you understand what I mean. But the problem is this isn't going to work because we've redirected buffer 1 to point at buffer 2. And then we're setting buffer 2 to point at the redirected buffer 1. So these now both point at the memory um, that's pointed at by buffer 2. What we need to do is have a temporary variable in here. So these buffers are of type um, uint pointer, uint32 pointer. I need a variable called temp here. So that's a pointer, and I'm going to say um, temp equals m underscore buffer 1. So we've stored the location that buffer 1 was pointing at. Then I'm going to change buffer 1 to point at the buffer 2 memory. Then I can change buffer 2 to point at the stored original value of buffer 1, which is now in temp. This is a very common uh, little design pattern in computer programs where you, you use a temporary variable and you use it to swap two values. In fact, I think we've even seen it before in this course when we were reversing a string. We've seen a similar, uh, probably we've seen a similar idea, though I can't quite remember. So let's just check this. We've got temp at buffer 1. Buffer 1 is then pointing at buffer 2. Buffer 2 points at temp, so we've swapped the areas of memory around. Now what we want to do is iterate through all the pixels, look at buffer 2, which now contains the pixel information that's been written into it, 
and do some calculations to create the blur effect and copy it into buffer one, which is now a, a clean buffer. And um, then we can plot those values on the screen. And we're not going to erase any of the buffers in between iterations of the game loop um, here. What we're going to do is um, we're, we're going to keep blurring the same screen more and more. So when we, when we draw a screen, we'll blur whatever was on the screen previously and then um, well, we'll take whatever's on the screen previously, draw the new pixel on it, and then blur it. So every time we redraw the screen, um, the stuff that was on it previously will get more and more blurred. Only the new stuff will be comparatively sharp. And that's going to give us some beautiful um, trails on our pixels that will blur out more and more as the pixel um, moves along, a bit like a sort of comet trailing its... Um, sort of fiery tail that sort of expands as the comet goes by, or I imagine it does. So now let's iterate over all the pixels. So let's have a, a loop here for int um, y equals naught, y less than screen uh, screen height, y plus plus. And within that, we're going to go over all the pixels in this particular row. So for int x equals naught, x less than screen width, x plus plus. Um, and by the way, I was thinking of implementing a get pixel function, but we, the trouble is we've got this problem that we have to get the pixel from one buffer after and sort of write into a second buffer. So um, it's not like we're getting and setting pixels on the same buffer. So I'm just going to implement the get pixel stuff using the bit shifting um, stuff that we've seen previously in this function here, directly in here, to get the colors of pixels from what is now buffer two, and then write them using set pixel into buffer one. Now within this, um, we've we've got we've got a particular this identifies a particular pixel. So um, we've got a particular pixel, but surrounding that pixels are eight other pixels. So you can, you can think of them as, let's use zeros. They look a bit like this. So we're, we're looking at this pixel in the middle here, but around it are a bunch of other pixels. And we want to, what we want to do is um, we want to add up the color values, the red, green, and blue values in each of these pixels, that's a total of nine pixels, then divide the results by nine and plot that result back into the pixel we're um, interested in setting here. So the color values of this central pixel, which, which is at um, location XY, will become an average of the color values of all of the pixels around it, including itself. And that's what creates the box blur effect. So to iterate through um, all these nine pixels, we're going to have yet another nested loop in here. We're going to say for int uh, col, or I could use a short or something, um, but I, I use int because uh, we've got enough memory here. For int, uh, let's, say, let's say row. For int row equals minus one. Row less than, so we'll do this loop while the row is less than plus one row plus plus and we're going to add this value which ranges from minus one through zero up to plus one we're going to add that to our x and y uh, actually to the y position for the row and that will give us this row for minus one this row for zero and this row for plus one and within that we'll have another nested loop for int col equals minus one while col is less than one. Sorry, I should have said that less than or equal to one, because we want this to go minus one, naught, one. While col is less than or equal to one, col plus plus. And now we, we can calculate um, the, val the coordinates of each of these pixels in this grid. Let's call this um, int, um, uh, we can call it uh, like pixel x or um, new x 
or current x or something. Let's call it current x equals x plus col and int current y equals y plus rho. So if you think about it, um, what we'll end up with here uh, we'll, en we'll end up with, for every pixel that we look at, every single pixel on the screen, we'll end up um, e examining, we'll end up iterating through all of the pixels in this grid of nine pixels that surround it, including the actual pixel itself, for, for when row and color are both zero. So this current x is going to range over all of these pixels one by one, if you think about it. Um, now, we want to get the, the colour values from these pixels and add them all together. So I'm going to have, um, outside of these, this inner loop that iterates over the grid of pixels here, but within these outer loops that iterate through each of the pixels on the screen, um, I need to have some colour values that I can total up. And these colour values are going to end up being more than you could store in an unsigned chart because we're adding up the values from nine pixels. So I'm going to have here an int, uh, let's call it red total, and I'll set it equal to naught. Int green total equals naught, and int blue total equals naught. Now we need to get the color of the pixel at this location, and add up all the separate components. But because we're iterating over all the pixels in the screen, it's possible that this pixel could be off the edge of the screen. Because if we start with pixel uh, x equals naught, y equals naught, then we try to get a pixel that's to the, let's say, to the upper left of it, for example, that pixel's not on the screen. So we, we need some way of ignoring pixels here that are off the edge of the screen. So let's say here, if, current x is greater than or equal to zero and so we want a logical and which in C++ you use two and signs and also we need to say that the current x must be less than the screen width because the maximum x we can have is um, one less than the screen width because we start numbering at zero and we've got screen width number of pixels. This is an array. So we need to make sure that x is between these two values. And also, we must have current y is greater than or equal to naught. And as well, um, current y must be less than screen height. And if so, we can go ahead and get the color value of that pixel. And by the way, in C++, the way these ands function, uh, or ors, for example, is the, um, the computer will go through each of these clauses. And in, for ands, for example, each of, all of these must be true to make the condition as a whole true and to execute the if. They, they have to all be true because we've anded them all together. And so if it goes through, it'll start checking them from the left. And as soon as it finds one that's false, it will stop going through all of these and um, it won't bother doing the rest because there's just no need as soon as you find a false one. It's going to check all of these and um, it's only going to do the if, if every one of these conditions in here that we've anded together are true. That's because we've used the logical and. Let's get the pixel colour there. So I'm going to say, I'll, I'll use the um, SDL type U int 32, which means an unsigned integer that is guaranteed to be 32 bits. Normally it is 32 bits, but it's, it's not guaranteed. It could be different on your machine, it's possible. So uint32 color equals, and now we need to access the buffer that contains the pixel information, which is now buffer two, because we swapped it with buffer one. So we need to say buffer uh, m underscore buffer two. And the formula is, um, it's y, sorry, not y, but current y times screen width 
that's the number of rows down that we're going, plus current x. This is how we get from um, x and y coordinates to an index within this array, which again, it, you have to think about it a little bit the first time you see it, but then you see that this does work. So that gets us the color, and now we need to get the red, green, and blue components out of that color so that we can sum them all together. Uh, so um, it, it wouldn't be any good just summing up all the colors um, and then dividing by nine to get the average color uh, because, well, if you, think, if you just think about it carefully, you realize that it wouldn't work. It takes a bit of thinking about, but um, in fact, that, that just doesn't do the trick at all. We, we, need to, we need to actually go for the trouble of getting out the individual red, green, and blue components, summing them separately and dividing them by nine separately. So uh, let's take a look at screen.h, um, no not screen.h, let's take a look at set pixel actually uh, because in there we see how the colour information maps to an integer. Uh, we see that we, we've added red here and then shifted red a byte along to the left and then green and then blue. So th the way it works is um, we've got a alpha value I think, yeah because Oh no, the blue is also shifted right at the end there. So I think the format here is we've got red here, um, green, blue, and then alpha, which is a transparency that we're not using. So the red, if I've got this right, is shifted uh, three bytes um, along to the left in this, in this thing here. So we, we start off putting it right there. And then by the time we finish, we've done one, two, three shifts, which is 24 bits, three bytes, to move it three bytes over, whoops, to the, um, to the right-hand side there. Let's see if I can just do, redo my typing there. There we go. So uh, to get the red value out, what we can do is, let's go back to the box blur. We can say here, um, well, again, we'll use the SDL type, you, int 8, which is an 8-bit unsigned 8-bit int, or we could use unsigned char, it's the same. Red equals color, and we need to right shift the color by 24 bits to get the red value, if I've got this right. And this is, this is tricky to get right. Um, every time I implement it, I do something wrong and then have to think very carefully over what I've done, putting in C out statements to check that all the different values are what they expect, or what I expect them to be. Um, but uh, I'm hoping that I can get it right this time. So now to get the uint8 green value, that was only shifted by 16 bits in the color. And uint8 blue is just shifted by eight bits. And the last value in the color is the red value. So yeah, I just shifted eight. After I put the blue on, I only shifted it by one byte, eight bits to the left. So if we shift the color by eight bits this way, and then take the last two digits of it in effect in hexadecimal, we've got the blue value as we saw in a, in a previous tutorial. Now we can say here, um, if we get, if we get um, a valid pixel and we can get color values out of it. We're going to say red total plus equals red, green total plus equals green, blue total plus equals blue. Now um, we've summed up all these values for a box surrounding this pixel here at x and y and we're going to go after this loop that iterates over that grid of nine pixels and now we can say u int 30, u in 8, this is going to be the actual color that we'll set the pixel to, red equals red total divide by 9, because there are 9 pixels in that grid. u int 8 green equals green total divide by 9. u int 8 blue equals blue total divide by 9. We've used red up here, but there's no problem using it here as well because remember variables are scoped to the innermost pair of brackets where they're defined. So um, yeah, these, these colors, they only exist between these two brackets here, these variables. 
then we use them and then we discard them basically. Similarly, these totals here, they're scoped to these brackets that actually define uh, the business of checking one pixel. I um, think it should be there, if I've got that right. Yeah, so that they're defined to the innermost set of brackets belonging to the for loops that actually check one individual pixel and then for the next pixel these are redeclared so that they're, they're completely reset. Okay so now we've got that we can use our set pixel which remember sets into buffer one but we um, copied the, the last lot of pixel information on the screen to buffer two. We're reading from that and plotting back into buffer one with set pixel which will plot the results of the blur on the screen. And uh, next time we go round, round the game loop in main.cpp, we'll blur that same buffer again after plotting the new pixel on it. So it'll get more and more blurred as it goes along for any given particular pixel trail, which is what we want. So let's say set pixel, uh, X, Y, red, green, blue. Now if I've got this right, it will work. And if I haven't, it won't. Um, let's try this, let's, let's run it. I don't know if I've forgotten anything here. So yes, it works. Um, now this doesn't look too great at the moment. Uh, when it expands a bit like this, it starts to look um, kind of cool. Um, especially if you look at the pixels on the outer edge. Uh, the reason it doesn't look as good as it does in the final program is because we still need to tweak the behavior of the pixels. We've got a big sort of solid white bunch of pixels there, a big lo load of solid color. And we want to do some things like making them move in a more interesting way and trying to make this circle more ragged as well, which we can also do. So we're going to look at that in future tutorials, but I'll leave it there for now. So um, again, I'd encourage you to have a go at that. If you really get stuck and you can't get it to work, um, you can always copy my source code here and um, try to examine what you've got different to my code. Um, I'll make this code available where, wherever the lecture is available um, on my website. On YouTube, I can't attach the source code, but it'll be on my website. If you're watching on udemy.com, it'll be attached to the lecture. Um, if there's some other system I have this video on uh, that only allows you to attach source code at the end of all the lectures, then I'll attach it to the final lecture, but it, it will be there somewhere except on YouTube where you can't attach files. But this, this, is, this is very tricky, but if you can get your head around this, or even 90% of this, and if you can get it working more to the point, then you've really um, done something quite amazing. It took me a long time before I could get the hang of blur algorithms like this. This is pretty advanced C++ really. You have to think hard to get this to work. So um, it's a challenge, but it's a challenge worth having, um, having a go at. So um, we'll look at uh, probably changing pixel motion a bit more in the next tutorial, but we've almost come to the end of this now. We've almost got our final program. Uh, so until next time, happy coding. <laughs>